Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We're working on page three. Page three. So this is from the eight by eight. Oh my Pattern is solid. Background collection, sorry. I was thinking about graphic 45. This is page two, so I want to look at both as we're trying to uh, make sure that there's a lot of flow between the two pages, and I think the tones match, so I think that's going to work for us. So I've already inked this with mahogany. This is gonna become our base for the pocket page. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I just got done walking my dog. Not that anybody cares, but there it is. Um, and then I've got these two four by four um, pattern paper. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're back working on page three. So it's going to be a very simple page. We've got a waterfall feature over here on page two, and I'm thinking I might use this here, but I haven't decided completely. This is going to become the base of page three, and then I've got these two photo mats, which come from a single piece of paper, split in half, and they're gonna become the photo mats for page three. And then I have this chipboard piece, which they don't call it that. I just can't remember what it is, but you can tell it's thicker than the sticker sheets that I've used before. And it's gonna go right here. And I wanna use this in particular because it pulls in the purples and the greens, the violets, everything from the other page to this page, which, which gives it a lot of continuity. This was trimmed off one of the papers, and the way I got this matted frame around it is, sorry, I didn't mean to drop it, I used this very wide edge, not this one, but this one, which is pretty wide, traced around, well, I glued, I cut the, fussy cut it out, glued it down on paper stock, then traced it with this, and it leaves just enough of a faint image that you can cut it with your scissors. And I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed with my own work. It, it really helps you fussy cut around things. So I'm pretty happy with that. Although it was not really that complicated, I think it does look good. And I think it's going to make what wouldn't have been surrounded with paper stock much more bold. I tried it both ways, by the way. So I'm pretty happy with that. So this came off, it was fussy cut off one of the sheets. So here we go. So this image has been inked and it with mahogany and is from the 8x8 collection pack. 8x8 background pack, sorry. That's so, I don't know why that's so hard. I think it's because I've been so entranced with graphic and so I want to say backgrounds and solids, um, which was the first company that did that. Um, none of the companies we deal with now did that five years ago. So everybody does it now, but it's new, um, comparatively speaking, because graphic's been around so long. And it was stunning to me. It took so long for some of these paper companies to figure that out. I mean, I don't know. It just seems weird to me because paper is ridiculously expensive. And when it's gone, it's gone. And when you sell mixed media, some of those mixed media things can last for months. So paper, you use it as a card or in an album, it's gone. You might have a pot of Mod Podge or some sparkle fancy thing. Could get you through a whole year. I don't feel that way about paper. So when this company introduced backgrounds, I was thrilled. And Chow Bella does it now too. But I still think that Graphic 45 clearly figured that out early on and then still the master in that space. Okay, so these are my two four by four photo mats and I'm gonna lay them down in a diagonal and I'm gonna put something decorative in the middle. So what I'm trying to figure out now is how far away from each corner. 
So I plan to leave this corner on it here so that we can slide a photo under it. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this down first. And it's just a four by four on a piece of cardstock. Nothing special. No flip, no flap. Just a photo mat. Oh my gosh, that rhymes. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I think I'm gonna go about half inch side and bottom, roughly. And I'll do the same here, half inch side and bottom. That's not straight. Better, there we go. So I'm gonna glue these two sides, which are the top and side. And halfway across the bottom. And a diagonal. There we go. Just like so. Yeah. So, like I said, page two, page three. Now, this is going to lay in between, and I'm going to uh, adhere it right here. It's not going to be attached below. And also, um, I'm not going to attach this side so that the, the picture can still be tucked in. <clears throat> I think that's it. So we should be able to tuck a picture under here, under here, 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 as such. This is a little bowed out, the cardstock is, so it'll just take a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's... Pretty good. Let's test. We'll just use a little piece of cardstock and see if we can get it under yeah, the places we expect. So yes, so a three by three would work brilliant. And yeah, perfect. So too much paper here. I'm gonna turn this down real quick uh, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Three and a half by three and a half. <clears throat> it's actually tighter than I want it to be. Sorry, my mom's not doing well. So I'm sorry. I have to stop. <clears throat> hey everyone, it's me. Um, we're going to do a couple more things on this page and then. I'm pulling page two back in because we're going to put something over here. Here's what I'm feeling pretty strong about. And then, sorry, I shuffled a bunch of more embellishments, but excuse me, I think we're going to use this here. So I really like this, and I mentioned it earlier because it pulls all these this palette back in. Sorry. I hate it when I leave all that stuff in your visual space. I apologize. I feel out of sorts today, so things aren't going as smoothly as I'd like. Perfumery was fussy cut. I think I mentioned that from one of the other pages. And then I put some white cardstock or cream cardstock and I used, if I didn't mention it, a wide embossing to trace it. And then I just follow the embossing pattern and it works. Look at, look at that, it's perfect. It makes a perfect pattern. And then I don't have to pull out a machine, scan the image, then cut it. So I think that's awesome. I figured that out, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And I don't always mention it, but when I'm fussy cutting and trying to mat something, that's the method I use. I put it on a whole piece of paper, trace it with 
a wide embossing tool, trace it around, and that's how I get this result. So I have these two photo mats, this chipboard piece, this piece of fussy cut from the collection, and this is another chipboard piece. <clears throat> and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to leave it here. Originally I was placing it here, but I think this looks too crowded, although I like it with the colors. So I think this is one of the uh, adhesive backed papers and it doesn't pop enough for me. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna peel the back off and then we're gonna place it on some cardstock and I'm gonna do the same technique. <coughs> with this embossing tool. And if you have um, a foam mat to place it on, even better. If not, it still works. You just have to press harder and you just trace the design. And based on the width of the ball, I think it's about right that if we follow the outside of that, embossing we're going to wind up with a perfectly matted flower which I think will help it pop off the other page <clears throat> Oops, it's tight. Okay, be right back. Okay, after much fiddling around with accents for these two pages, I did decide on this chipboard piece to accent. Um, this page and let's see if I have yeah, a handy piece of paper. So ideally, um, you're going to be able to tuck your photo underneath this and underneath this. And then this is the last piece we're going to place. And then I, I went back and forth about adding flowers, but this is so floral and so pretty, I've decided to add these two pieces. This is um, one of the small cut aparts, but I actually cut inside. So if you took, that doesn't really work. If you took one of these journaling cards and cut right in the middle of it, this, this is kind of what I wound up with. So it has some pearls. I think it's very pretty and subtle. And then I'm going to use this, uh, which was also cut apart and from one of the back pages of the collection pack. And I think it's from the 8x8. So I'm going to stack these two just because it, it feels like we need something here. And I actually designed it so that we would have space to put an embellishment, but not quite enough space for a photo. And then, like I said, over here, we've got these four by four photo mats. We've got this matted perfumery, and I think it looks beautiful. And again, I trace this, and I mention it repeatedly throughout this video, with an embossing tool. Um, I don't know what the size of this is. It doesn't actually say, and they're interchangeable. But it's fairly large as compared to this embossing tool and this is what I typically score my flanges with. So you can see there's quite a difference between the two. So this is what I usually use to score the pages. This is what I'm using to trace with. All that being said, that's just because it leaves a wider footprint, easier to follow if you're trying to fussy cut like I was. So this is gonna go here. These two are attached. This is now attached. We need to add this. And I need to get my glue ready. Yeah, there we go. So I'm pretty happy with the, the layout with these two pages. Oh, I need to clean my glue cap and again, as usual. Oh, I need to ink these before I lay them down. 
I've been chatting with Julie, who's on her vacation. She's having a good time, learning lots of new things. I can't wait to catch up with her, and uh, she's in Egypt, so I can't wait to catch up with her and find what she's learning. I think that's all very fascinating, as I think most of us do. Anyway, here we are. So we're going to lay that down first. This will be our second piece. Oh, I had already inked that. So one out of two. Not bad. Go ahead and lay this down. I'm not going to pop it because it's kind of close to the edge and we've already got this. I don't want to conflict. So I'm just going to put it down flat. And, and this is already raised as well. So. And this was just free cut. Oops, I dropped it, sorry. <clears throat> Pretty sure this second piece is from the 8x8. It's very small. As you can see, 2 and 1 8, so it's pretty small. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from, but I cut the cut apart so, so quickly that I had difficulty keeping track of the size it was coming from. <laughs> So I'm going to, just going to do a partial overlay, and we're just looking for what's pleasing. I like that. And the other reason we're using this is to pull that green back in, which creates some unification. Okay, now we're ready to lay this down. And I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. And like I said, it's using that technique with the embosser. And... Uh, you know, some people just see it. I can't. Um, especially if I'm dealing with shadows, I just can't see it. I can't feel it, so. There we go. So that's beautiful. There we go. So this is room for four by fours, three and a half by three and a halfs, and even a three by three here if you like. Um, but I think the spread turned out pretty nice. So this is page two, page three, and that's it. Next time we get together, we'll be working on four and five because this is a big album. We've got a few pages to go. See you soon.